He iwi wairua ngā iwi taketake o te ao, he wairua no te reo rauriki o te rangi me te reo reuru o te whenua. I whakawhai te atu ngā iwi taketake o te ao ki tūranga waewae marae i te wiki nei, ki te kororo mo te hauora, mo te mātauranga, me te ahurea. Hei aha, hei pai here i te wairua mahaki o ngā iwi taketake o te nā whenua o te nā whenua. He karanga ki ngā iwi taketake o te ao. The indigenous call to the world. And the call was answered. How do you identify what are the catalysts that will make people flourish? Which is an interpretation of healing the spirit. I think in the early days, the focus tended to be much more on trying to explain failure. What we've tried to do in the seventh gathering is to identify catalysts for success. So it's a different approach, but recognises a different way of dealing with the same problem. Fifteen hundred indigenous peoples descended on Tūranga Waiwai Marae, with Kingi Tu Heitia as patron for the seventh annual Healing Our Spirits conference. A celebration of our people. Healing Our Spirit Worldwide is an international movement around the health and healing of indigenous peoples around the world. The big message is we are still here. We're celebrating our resiliency and our tenacity to overcome the impacts of oppression and colonization. When I talk about celebrating, it's about developing our own programs so we can develop our own people our way, based on who we are and our cultures as indigenous peoples around the world. What started in Canada from one person to deal with substance and alcohol abuse among indigenous peoples in the 80s has grown into a worldwide movement and today thousands attend the conference in Kirikirirua, Te Papa Nui. I've been waiting to uh, present to, to this group for a very long time. I consider you my peer group. Um, very often I speak to um, doctors, to, well actually I call them dum-dum doctors, <laughs> and I, I usually have to dumb down my messaging because even though physicians are generally uh, well educated and, and quite bright, um, their understanding of our realities of indig as indigenous peoples is usually quite small. The last hosts, the native peoples of Hawaii, have always had a strong presence at this gathering since its inception. I'm a professor and I teach uh, students within our medical school. Many are indigenous but not all. And um, the course that I teach is about broadening perspectives in terms of behavioral health, in terms of uh, psychosocial aspects of disease. So the impact of culture, religion, economics, um, political policy, how that impacts the way we care for our people. There's so much to learn and there's so much to absorb, but honestly, what I have gained is a, a sense of validation. You know, we were talking about the presentation that we did yesterday, and I have to say, it was really interesting because I feel like I spend so much time defending what I do, that when I'm here, it is not about defending, but really connecting and sharing in a way that I can say something and see all heads nod and just know that I've, I've been able to build that bridge and for myself feel better about what I do. There is also a call from the Native Americans to validate indigenous culture and practices to heal in this modern world. My presentation talked about how we're using evidence-based trauma therapy models and we're incorporating our traditional Native American practices into um, the, the therapy, the groups, the individual, and um, trying to weave them together so that uh, our youth can heal. 
This is its sage, okay? And what we use sage for is to cleanse. Um, this idea of validation of indigenous healers is supported by other nations. And again, giving um, the group participants, we have our own people to help heal us. We don't always need to rely on the educated people or professionals that come from outside the communities because who better to know than our own people about us and our own difficulties and hardships to help you know, overcome trauma, to help deal with it, to help process it and heal from it. For me, I just really appreciated her message of empowerment, her message of really loving the fact that our culture is so rich uh, in any in any native Aboriginal culture. With 1,500 Manufiri Oteao gathering in one house, the hunger for culture grows, but not always satisfied in such a modern city. Culture was always there. It was a matter of who is sharing it within our family. Uh, many of us sometimes a little detached from it, but culture is most important. They all know who they are and where they come from. Um, now we're working on becoming uh, better practitioners of it, you know, and bringing it and making it part of our life. With over 260 presentations and thousands of visitors representing 500 million Indigenous peoples of the world, the theme this year is about flourishing, looking at success. We spend too much time looking at what's wrong and not enough time looking at what can be right and how to get there. And so it's a diff slightly different message. That I, I come from a background as a psychiatrist where we spent most of our time looking at what's wrong so that we try and get to the basis of the problem and that would take ages. And the approach that's being used, I think increasingly here, is one which says, well, we know what the problem is, but what are the catalysts that can lead to success? This gathering started to allow peoples to connect and to learn from other cultures. The indigenous leadership continues to grow as Ngā Iwi Taketake look towards the eighth gathering to be held in Sydney. We're much more similar than we are dissimilar. We are all related and, and uh, I really feel like it's a very positive movement and it feels good and, um, and you know, you have to love the, the ability of Indigenous peoples to share not only what we do with our everyday lives but in our stories, in our mo'olelo, in our chants, our mele, our oli, in our dance, you know, we are, um, we're, we're beautiful people. The beauty and the strength remains in the indigeneity of the cultures and the peoples who represent their communities of success and the dream of having influence on the United Nations.